This is part two of a video demonstration for being able to evaluate transfer beams with stiffness modifiers or by using crack deflection with tributary or global load reactions. In part one of this two-part series, we showed how to evaluate a transfer level with multiple transfer beams using transfer or load takedown tributary forces and also global forces from a finite element solution. <clears throat> and the purpose of part one was to show how to apply user-defined stiffness modifiers in evaluating the, the beams. In part two, we're going to show how to actually calculate the cracked deflection in ADAPT and then um, design the beams relative to that particular um, solution. So we're going to use the same model as in part one. A couple of things to note in this model is in the loading combinations we have a cracked deflection combination. So we want to we want the program to determine the level of cracking, if any, at these beams with the application of the reactions, um, participating in the loads that might produce uh, moments that exceed the cracking moment for the different nodes in the structure. So we have already obtained the reactions for tributary and for the global FEM run. We're going to create a baseline solution, which means we're just going to just solve this particular level without any reactions. Just to kind of see where we're at in terms of the cracking of the beams with the load applied only at this level. So let's go ahead and start. We're going to go to analysis and we're going to execute the analysis without reactions. So the program will solve for reinforcement um, for these load combinations. Now this model also contains support lines and design strips in both directions because we want to have a good idea of what the reinforcement will be within the slab so that we can properly account for that in checking the crack deflection. After we've analyzed the structure, we're going to generate our design cuts. And you can see in the, in the X direction, we have design cuts um, so we'll turn those tributaries off and we're going to design both sets X and Y okay we'll design the sections for the floor this essentially dictates what reinforcement is being designed for these loads that under consideration remember these these reactions are not applied for this run and that's an important distinction between this solution and what we'll show next so once that's done we can go back to analysis and we can run the crack deflection check and before we proceed into actually looking at the cracking we're going to go ahead and select the default display and i'll generate the reinforcement output for this run and you can see for example in these beams we we have um, roughly nine number eight bars. So there's not a lot of reinforcement. These are currently being designed as RC. Um, relatively speaking, there's a lot less reinforcement in this run than what I'll show you here in just a moment. So after we have run the crack deflection, we can produce a deflection result for that particular crack deflection case. We can select, for example, the uncracked case using I gross and our beam deflection uncracked for this run um, under deformation Z direction. Let's check beam here. Deformation Z. And I'll go back to this view. So the deflection is about a quarter of an inch. This is the uncracked condition. If we look at the cracked condition for the same case, we actually have to do that using the, the contours. So let's go back here to slab contours, deformation, and reviewing these, these contours here, we have 0.22. I'll go ahead and change the contour labeling to every single contour. And you can see there is there is cracking. There's This is about 0.31. So we went from 0.22 up to about 0.31 at these interior beams. A more direct way of, of obtaining those results would be to um, review the loss of stiffness 
at the beams. And to do that, we'll go to the view analysis results. I'm going to isolate just the beams here. I'll go to a wire frame view and selecting the cracked combination we can go to beam actions and check reduced stiffness ratio. And if I numerically turn on the display for the, the, the numbers, we can see we have, you know, roughly 40 to, um, or excuse me, uh, 60 to 50 to 60 percent, even a little more for the loss of stiffness. Okay. Remember, this, this is with only load applied to the slab with no reactions. Let's go back and we're going to rerun this now. We're going to run the same process, but we'll use load takedown. And I'll use the tributary reactions and run through the identical process. We'll go now and design the sections. And then we're going to run the cracked deflection again. And after we run crack deflection, I'll come back and review the reinforcement. So we'll go back and generate the reinforcement. And you can see at these beams, 50 number eight bars in these beams, 30 on the perimeter beam. If you turn on the design cut, you can see at the center of that beam, we have about 40 square inches of steel needed at that beam. And just by looking at that amount of steel, we can see what that's going to do to the cracked moment of inertia. It's going to potentially create a cracked moment of inertia that's very, very large as compared to iGross. So looking back at the view analysis results, because there is so much steel being calculated for those beams, and that steel is being driven by minimum requirements and also by the need to meet the strength or the demand moment, the moment at the center of that span is around 3,000 uh, kip feet. So we need a lot of steel to meet that design moment. If we come back and look at the cracked uh, moment of inertia or the, the, the loss of stiffness, which is essentially I effective over I gross uh, in this case, we'll go back to the cracked deflection combination and reduce stiffness ratio, you can see that these are actually one. On the outside, we have 0.86. And intuitively, this, this doesn't make a lot of sense if we say, well, under you know these point loads, these beams should be cracking a, a lot more than when we don't have the point loads, where we were cracking 40, 50, 60%. And the reason you're seeing this type of a result is because there's so much reinforcement the way that the program applies um, a bilinear crack analysis using the, the Branson's method, um, the program essentially ends up using I gross as the moment of iner or as the moment of inertia when we rerun the the stiffness uh, for these beams and re reanalyze for cracking, and that's just due to the uh, to the large amount of reinforcement in the beam. And to verify that, you could actually go into the uh, cracked underscore name of file dot DFL. This is in the databases folder under the ADO folder, subfolder. And this file essentially contains every design cut uh, in the slab. And in this case, we're looking at that center cut on that center beam. We can see that the applied moment under the cracked combination one is around um, this is in in metric so this is newton millimeters this ultimately ends up being around uh, a moment of around 2900 uh, kip feet the cracking moment is shown here for top and bottom we're, we're concerned about the positive cracking moment this is positive bending and this is quite a bit larger than the cracking moment so if we look at the eye gross for the full section Notice that I cracked positive and negative are shown, and the I cracked positive is basically matching I gross, meaning we max it out at I gross. That ultimately ends up leading to an I effective equal to I gross for this section. 
So that is uh, the amount of rebar is considered in the sense that we're calculating I crack using that in the equation to, to determine I effective and that leads to this type of a result for um, for the solution. This is not always the case. Sometimes you'll have you know less let, let's say more cracking on these beams but it is a function of the the amount of reinforcement necessary for the design of those beams. If you have any questions, please contact us at support at adaptsoft.com.